What's up guys, it's your girl Emily Curl here at iHeart and today I'm joined by artist JP Sachs. Give it up, JP! Thanks for having me. We're so happy to have you here and we were talking before, I'm such a huge fan of your music. Thank you. And I want to talk about your song, If the World Was Ending. Okay. It's so good and I feel like there's been such a good response to it. Why do you think it resonated with so many people? I think it's just, it's nice to fantasize about a world where all of the very good reasons you have not to talk to the people you don't want to talk to just become entirely irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you can just live in a romantic fantasy. I think that was the fun of it for us too, just kind of imagining that. And that's why it resonated so deeply with you. Yeah, I mean, it's been cool to see, like this song is in no way me condoning the texting of exes. <laughs> I, I think people should not do that. But it's been cool to see people respond to the song with like it making them want to maybe reconnect with a family member mm. or something like that. You know, just all of those reasons that seem petty if the world is ending. Right, right, taking when their love own interpretation of yeah. it. Yeah, when love feels bigger. Okay, so Julia Michaels is on the song. Mm -hmm. Talk me through that first Julia Michaels meeting and everything that unfolded afterwards. So we connected originally because she shared another one of my songs called 25 in Barcelona. I love that song because I went to Barcelona and I felt like I was 25 there. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I wrote this on the day after my 25th birthday. Really? I didn't intend for that to be even a record that came out. It was just kind of a cathartic needed to oh write it God, kind of so thing. Funny. So it's crazy that those would be the songs that would end up like really kind of changing my life. So I was on a road trip talking to my friends about how I thought Julia was just the most influential songwriter of our generation. She's amazing. Just, she is she's so good. Mm -hmm. And 15 minutes later I get a notification on my phone saying Julia Michaels tagged you in a story. What? Yeah, and she had, so she had shared the song. I messaged her, I said thank you. We started talking, she suggested we write. I tried to play it cool. Um, <laughs> Slid into the DMs, I like it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we set up a session. We wrote that song, If the World Was Ending, the day we met. That's so great. And mm -hmm. how special that that song is like, it's so popular, it's so successful. It was a really good day. That is a good day. Mm -hmm. So Julia, like, is, is she's one of my favorite artists too. What do you think is your favorite thing about her, both professionally and personally? Uh, kind of the same. She's She tells the truth no matter what. She's mm. as no BS of a person as I've ever met, both in her music and in her in her life. Phineas also produced it. He heard the demo that Julie and I did. All of the vocals and piano on the track are from the day we wrote it. Are you kidding? Mm -hmm. So it was like one and done. You wrote it, recorded it, and then that was that's we, what we hear? We wrote it, recorded it, sent the vocals and the piano to Phineas. What? He added what he added, the drums and all that Sonic World stuff, and then it was done. That's crazy. Yeah, it's wild. It can take forever, and then sometimes it can just be so simple. Has that ever happened to you before, where you wrote and recorded it on a 24-hour turnaround? Uh, I think this was the fastest written to released process I've ever been in, for sure. That is so interesting. I did not know that. Yeah, because you always imagine it would take like months and re-recording. Usually and does. It's just a magical song. But I mean, Julia and Phineas are two of the most talented people in the music industry, so yeah, it makes it a lot so easier. Awesome. I feel very lucky to have worked with both of them. Speaking of working with amazing people, you're going on tour with Lynn and Stella. Yes, I, I am. Such a duo. I love Lynn and too. It's really what are you exciting. most looking forward to for that? I mean, I've been lucky to tour with people who I'm genuinely a fan of, and I'm a huge fan of Lennon. Like, in our, on my last tour, I was in the van, like, jamming to her piece. <laughs> like, really? I know every word to those songs. <laughs> I probably did too. That's awesome. So, you know, I get to play in Europe for the first time. I've never done shows in Europe. So it's wow. just kind of a perfect situation. Yeah. And I'm so happy. It happened organically too. I literally. Really? Like, How did it come to be? I'm a huge fan of hers. She had seen um, a jazz cover I did on my Instagram that she shared. We started talking on Instagram. I told her that if she wanted or needed support on any one of her shows, that I would fly anywhere in the world. And she's like, all and right. She well, was like, come okay. <laughs> Basically. Like a few days later, we got an official offer for those shows. You're kidding. Yeah. Oh my God. And so now the tour starts when? Uh, the tour starts February 19th in Paris. What a good way to kick it off. I feel the same way. <laughs> Going to Paris and started toward London, wow. Um, okay, so speaking of shows, you're mm -hmm. also performing tonight in New York. Yes. And this is your first headlining New York show. First headline show in New York, That's yeah. That's so exciting, how first... does that feel? Uh, it's a trip that people would dedicate an entire night to just wanting to hear my songs. Mm. That's wild. How does performing for you compare to other parts of the creative process? It's my favorite part. Performing is? Yeah, because you know, really? songwriting you take these incredibly personal, very alone moments where it's all about being connected to yourself in a way that makes you feel like you're being honest with yourself. And then to see the process of turning that into a song that allows you to then be so connected to other people. You know, performing mm. is when it gets to be, the connection with myself turns into a connection with, mm. you know, right now a few hundred people and hopefully someday a few bajillion people. <laughs> Starting in Paris, absolutely. <laughs> 
How would you describe that first moment of you walking on stage and like seeing a crowd coming to see you? What does that feel like for you? You know, when I first get on stage, I usually start by singing with my eyes closed. Really? To just remember that it's like, it's still that personal. And then I open my eyes like ha maybe like a quarter way through the first song. You're like, are y'all still there? So good? Yeah, exactly. Checking in? And I'm like, all right, we're all here together. We're doing this. Interesting. And you think you'll continue doing that? It's like a good, is that good, like you're... For now. It's how I like ground myself when I first get on stage. I just start singing a cappella. I close my eyes and then open them and I'm just like, all right, we're in this. Now we but... go. So I told you before we started this interview, your songs are personal to me because your one song, The Few Things, it's such a sweet song and it's very cheesy, but it's something I sent to my boyfriend because it makes me think of him. And you were saying that you've heard so many amazing stories of people sharing that music. I mean, just one of the best parts of my job and I think being an artist is getting to see people finding their own, experience their own passion in their own, for other people in the way that I have put it in a song. So to see people finding love in the few things, getting married to it, you know, proposing with the song. Like, that's just so cool. So crazy. You also come from a musically talented family, and I see you on your Instagram playing your piano. Um, do you dabble in other instruments, too? I play a lot of very strange instruments, yeah. Did you like, play the cello growing up? I played the cello for a couple years okay, when I was like I 11, 12. Okay, I thought so. I can play the musical saw. What is that? That one's weird. Um, saw? Yeah, like a, like a hand saw. You can play music yeah, with that? you can play it with a bow. It sounds like an angel. What? Like a singing angel. From a saw? From a saw, it's surprising. Okay, wow, I need to see that video. It's not we what you would that. expect. It's a lovely, like, it's a, it's an antithesis metaphor in an instrument. <laughs> <laughs> okay, interesting, I could see that. What else do you play? Those are the only ones that I could play in any sort of musical capacity. Anything else, like, I could pick up and, like, maybe play a couple notes, but those okay, are the only ones that like I will too. claim. Are you ever gonna bring the saw on stage? I mean, I think I have to now. With your eyes closed? I've never talked about be... it with an interview before. Really? That sounds dangerous. I feel special. <laughs> Eyes closed sounds like Eyes closed to the song. Wow, what an exciting show. To <laughs> for too. Just like magic show, like oh, slash music half, show. Half magician, half musician. So music is obviously important to you. Mm -hmm. And you've also been open about how tough of a time this year has been for you. Mm -hmm. Do you think music helps you cope with that? The great parts of our life don't wait for the crap parts of our life to mm -hmm. end nor do the crap parts of our life wait for the good parts of our life to end. Yeah. Um, and I've been very much in the best and worst time of my life for the last little while. Yeah. But I'm grateful that I got to share, I mean, I'm talking about my mom, and I'm grateful that I got yeah. to share the beginnings of uh, my career starting to work um, and falling in love. And she got to see that and I'm, I'll never forget that. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm putting out this EP, yes, it's like, it's a career move. Yes, it's like something that I'm excited to like work on and it, it's tied to my ambition, it's tied to my goals, but it'll also always be tied to, you know, sitting beside her and finishing the production on that EP on my laptop, yeah. like in a hospice, you know, like that will never be disconnected. And like I said, all of these things exist at the same time and emotions don't happen one at a time. And right. it has definitely been a challenge in like making space for all of it, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. balance is a constant struggle. and it will continue to be and certainly is now. Yeah, thank you for letting us into that side of your world because even for me personally and the fans, like we're thinking of you, we're thinking of thank you. your family and your music and we're excited for you and I think it takes a lot to be really vulnerable like that. I think it just shows who you are as a person. Thank so you. I wanna talk about everything that is to come. So your new EP, <laughs> when can we expect it? What's gonna be on the EP? It's called Hold It Together. It started with me being excited about how that could mean three different things. It could mean hold it together like keep it cool. It could mean hold it together like this thing will break if I don't hold it together. Mm. And it can mean like this is something that we share and we need to hold it together. That really connected to sort of my process figuring out how to share myself with another person. Mm. And like mm -hmm. how actually being loving means allowing yourself to be unfigured out in front of someone else. And that's something I didn't figure out in my last relationship and I'm really trying to figure out both with people I love and in my relationship now and that ended up being more of a summary for this body of work in a lot of ways than I even anticipated. Because yes, it's about like my romantic relationships, but it's also about like, you know, like you said, like me being open about like mm -hmm. a difficult time in my life. Me holding it together doesn't just mean me like pretending everything's okay. Right. Like it means it's allowing me, those things to come in. People and... to hold it with me. Oh, wow, that's so beautifully said. Well, JV, thank you so much for being here. Thank and you thank for, you for sharing me. so much. Thank you guys for watching. Make Thanks sure watching. you stream all of JP's music on the iHeart app. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, JV. Good thank luck you. tonight. Appreciate it. <laughs> Bye, guys.
Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.